Shall I remain standing for a word of prayer? I have a, <coughs> excuse me, Sister Stillwell has an unspoken request. I had to jot down a couple of notes. And um, Brother Vela, please pray for Carmen and Lloyd. Since we've seen how they are responding to the gospel, while Brother Valia and Sister Rain and David are testifying to them. This is a parallel with what you told me a couple of years ago. Quote, Brother Vella, they are seed of God and we will claim them. And I believe this is the season of harvesting for the kingdom of God. Also, please pray for Brother Vali and his family and Brother Juanita and family. And uh, Sister Tarsi fell in the bathtub full of water. Just by, the, by God's grace, she was able to pull herself up. We really have to keep praying for her. And, um, and I believe that is all. Let us go to the, the throne of grace this morning. Our gracious Lord, as we approach the throne of grace, we are conscious that we are standing in the presence of God. We are, pro are conscious, dear God, that thou hast bid us to come to make our requests known unto thee. And Lord, thou knowest the request which has been spoken out. So now, Heavenly Father, may the blood of Jesus Christ sprinkle us from an evil conscience and all sin and transgressions. God, may we be sitting in heavenly places this morning in Christ Jesus. And our dear sister Stillwell and all others who have uh, unspoken requests this morning, Lord, may you look down into their hearts and and grant those requests to them this morning, whatever they may be. And Lord, our little sister Tarsi, God, we just feel that one day she's going to be made whole. Oh God, that third pull is going to speak, and God, she's going to be made whole by the word of the Lord. So we pray, God, that we, we're praying and holding till the voice of God speaks, Lord. We can remember back, Brother Branham, going through with Sister Edith Wright and how he held. But Lord, somehow we feel that this one is going to, to be made manifest here, Lord. Her healing is going to be made manifest. And Lord God, we pray also for um, Brother Vela's uh, spoken, re spoken request, dear God, for his family, his daughter rather, and son-in-law and family. And Lord, realizing that they came to this message some 10 years ago and were baptized in my home and how the enemy trapped them in the world. And Lord, uh, seeing Brother Valilia, who, who was bound by the enemy and then seeing him set free and seeing David and also Rain are going back and giving their testimonies and setting those people on fire. And then seeing that fire going from Brother and Sister David and uh, Rui, dear God, and then going to Brother of Valeria and Brother Juanito, and then they in turn coming back to see Lloyd and Carmen and setting them on fire. So Heavenly Father, we know something is already activated. So Lord God, we ask you now to, to continue to stir up their hearts, Lord, and bring them to a full conviction of the hour. And God, may their eyes be anointed and come open, and, and may the world be washed off. Heavenly Father, in the knowledge that you saved them and you're coming down the second time to pull them out of the world. Now, Heavenly Father, bless the word of God this morning and may it go forth in power and may the sick and the afflicted be healed in our midst. And God, may you come down, come down in a special way and confirm your word. God, we pray, Heavenly Father, and we ask it in Jesus' name and his sake. Amen. You may be seated. So quite a few requests all the time when we come in, I don't know, we're going to have to do something soon to cut it off because it just takes up too much time and we, we're going to have to just lay it up here and pray on them because you know what they are and because it, it takes about so much time to do it and because uh, you want to just strike those things that the Spirit of God, I pray, will give you inspiration to know just what to write and what to praise for. We've got to come to the time when we praise for certain things, you see, not the little things, uh, well, that's wonderful, you, we, we thank the Lord for that, and the little and the great, but coming up here, uh, we trust that we'll come to a maturity where we can just lay it here, and you know what it is, you know what I mean, and not each one have to hear it to be satisfied, you know, 
So, because we want to get right to the word of the Lord. So, uh, here's a praise here. It's just a, well, actually, was, I was looking for this. It was a prayer, and it had pr uh, praise on the top. I thank the Lord for all he's done for me and all that he's, uh, all that he's about to do. Please pray that God would touch my sister, Avion, I think, if, okay, what it is, who has to take an operation for adenoids a second time. Pray that God touches her before the doctor's knife does. And this is Sister uh, Leone, let us bow ahead in a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we was trying to remember where this was at, and here is buried here with a praise. So dear God, thou knowest uh, this soul, and we pray now, Lord, that you would move in, into the hospital, if she be there now, or even before she goes, and drop a, a word of healing into her body. And may the angel of the Lord move through there now and confirm it, Lord. Oh, God, heal her and make her whole. We pray and ask it in Jesus' name and his sake. Amen. Now we like to assist the elder here. I'd like to request prayer for, well, it's another one. <laughs> Got these mixed up here. Well, I'd like to request prayer for John Olson's sister, Marie, and her son, John. Marie lost her husband about four years ago. And now her son John is in a hospital in Colorado with the same thing. He's bleeding from the kidneys and is in very serious condition because of a clotting factor in the blood. Upon tests, they have found that her one daughter has the same thing. Tests have to be made on the other two girls. I just asked the Lord completely to undertake for his glory, Sister L. Well, let us ask the Lord again in prayer. Our Father, uh, the, this request has been read to thee now, Lord, and so we ask God that thou would undertake for Brother John Olson's sister and her family and this uh, uh, operation here, dear God, and this uh, um, ble uh, bleeding from the, uh, the, the, the kidneys, Lord. We pray, dear God, that you would heal both of them, Lord, and touch them, and God, may they come to know you in the power of your resurrection God, in the forgiveness of their sins, God, may they be healed. We pray, God, and we ask this in Jesus' name and his sake. Amen. Well, praise God. Every one of these means something now. You understand? What I'm saying is nothing, nothing wrong with sending them up here. No, see, but we just got to come to a point where we can just lay them here. You can still bring them up, see, but we're not going to read them out like that anymore. Unless you have it into the song leader at least five minutes before, but anything that because comes after, Brother Hunter, myself, or we just lay it here. See, and I hope you understand because we can't go through this here. It takes uh, it takes your mind away from from what you write when you come out of that room. There, you got your mind on the word, and then you're looking for a prayer request because I, I just walked in. There's about several papers here. I'm trying to get them all lined out because in a hurry. So, because we up in the word, <laughs> Amen. So I, I know you understand. See, God knows these things, and it's just a matter of making it known, and you bring it up here, it's made known. He knows it. And so we just lay our hands up on all of them at one time and ask God to take care of them. So I hope nobody, we would be mature to understand that. It wouldn't be slighting any one person. So we thank the Lord to be here this morning Amen. after the wonderful outpouring that we had Wednesday night. Amen. And so... Um, we're looking for more of the same. I am. And um, I have a message this morning. Well, it might be a little lengthy uh, because um, I feel that maybe this message would cap off this morning all that I have tried to preach down through the years and bring it to a, a point to where that's it, you know. And so maybe a little over an hour, I trust, because that all, that will all, that that's the length of the time it will be, I should come wanting to say. Now, uh, I ask you to read as a scripture lesson, the uh, Christ is the mystery of God revealed. And I'm going to quote from here because you'll understand as I'm doing it, why I'm doing this here. There's a secret lays in this here. And when I read it to you, you'll understand why. So then, if there's a secret laying here, and all of you are straining and pulling to uh, uh, know what it is, well then, if you will make it easier for me when I read it, that I don't feel a tenseness, you know, then I can, I start stammering and stuttering, I can feel that, uh, what's he trying to say? What's he, what's he trying to get at? But if we mature, 
and sit back. Amen. I told brother, uh, the little brother Craig, I told him he'd come in, he'd strain and strain and strain. Now he's just sitting back relaxing. He got the secret last week. He sat back, he was straining and straining, and he told me he's testifying about it. He sat back, he relaxed. Boom! He was hit right in the head. Amen. You ask him about it. If each one of you who are straining and all twisted up, if you could just sit back in your seats, amen, and just sit back, and you're going to get it. Now, I realize that, <laughs> my, praise the Lord, we had a wonderful time Wednesday, didn't we? Amen. You know why? You was relaxed. Amen. So you relaxed this morning? That's it. I was talking to one person in particular, and the person finally sat back and relaxed. They were up on top of him like that, see? And, and so I know what I'm talking about, see? Uh, you got it. Wonderful. Just, and I was talking to this person just the other day and telling that particular person to relax because you're going to get it because your mind go out and try to know what I'm going to say before I even say it and I don't know what I'm going to say because I preach by inspiration. So how can I tell you, how can you figure out what I'm going to say if I'm waiting for him to reveal it to me in the pulpit? So when you get ahead, you miss it. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. Now we're relaxing now. We're, we're all tensed up in here. Praise God. So now, um, Sister Nadine, would you come, please? We have a dedication. Now we'll start the service. Wonderful Jesus. Amen. So now um, we have uh, um, Brother Garcia and Sister Garcia are going back to Puerto Rico. And I mentioned it Wednesday. And to those of you who that were not here Wednesday, they are to leave and they feel, they feel inspired of God to go back to pass the little flock down in Guayama. We want to pray for them. Brother Hunt and I, because the elders will pray for Brother Garcia after. And so therefore, let us pray for them as they go out into the season of harvest that, that, that God would grant him the, the, the powers of the Holy Spirit to sow and reap in this year. Amen. So now uh, we have a dedication here, I understand. Uh, Sister Lydia Bermudez, uh, her um, I don't, a girl or boy here. Bring them in. I found what I was looking for, a couple of uh, appraisers here, and I got a, had it all mixed up with something else because I didn't want to miss this, and I know because uh, the enemy wanted me to miss it. took it completely out of, of my mind, but uh, it's a wonderful praise. That's why I say now, bring your praises in to certain ones that God wants read. So I'm not telling you not to do it now, see. Here's one here. Sister Mac Murray, several weeks ago, I asked the church to pray for a girl named Mona Walsh, who had a nervous breakdown due to parents' pressure for education. I heard on Friday she's pulling out of this uh, depression and opening up for the first time. Praise be to our God for his love and compassion. Please continue to pray for her soul, Sister Mac Murray. Now here's the one I wanted to, uh, our brother Gonzaga from uh, Ecuador, and Brother uh, Westerband had testified to him on his job about God and this message here in the end time, what God is doing. And he's been searching God for a long time. And he understands a little English. He can speak a little English. And he was baptized here, I believe it was about two weeks ago, I think. And then um, he had a problem of smoking, and, uh, and we prayed for him in the back. And here's his wonderful testimony. I thank the Lord for the blessings he is bestowing on me. Before I was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I had not felt what I have felt recently. Amen. A strange feeling inside of my body. In other words, something like pains, anguish inside of me to such extent that I wanted to scream while I was uh, working or on my job. I felt like running out. My hands were not strong enough to, to do my work. In my mind, there were two voices, one saying, you have to be light, L-I-G-H-T. Uh, wherever you go, you must testify with yourself, in other words, a new birth. The other voice saying, why to leave the things of the world because you enjoyed before, like that, so sudden, the devil speaking and God speaking. See, why leave the world and the things of the world? Smoke a cigarette, you will quit with the time. The voice told him now, if you're smoking, you'll get rid of it. It's all right. That's something? Uh, lie? That's nothing. No sin. 
<laughs> this is amazing. No wonder he didn't want me to read this this morning, huh? Then I also had a bad temper that I could not control. But the, the prayer uh, in my mouth always asking the Lord, do not faint the love in me. Amen. And that I'll be, uh, uh, and I'll be triumphant over the devil. Because God himself say, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. He also say he will, that he will permit temptations that your body can resist. I thank the Lord because peace and calm has come to me. I have more desire and thirst of God's word and love. And like Paul said, from grace to grace, I will reach perfection. He does all in me. I can do nothing. I quit smoking five days ago, something I could never do. Every 10 minutes, I had to light a cigarette. I quit before on my own, but a little while after, I went back to smoking. I thought I had no hope. So I thanked the Lord because while I was walking and smoking, a voice said, you have to testify. I threw it. I threw away the pack of cigarettes and said, Lord, I am in your hands. Brother Carlos Gonzaga. It's a wonderful testimony uh, to the grace and the sanctifying power of the word, the Lord Jesus Christ. So now he's showing you, this man hardly understands English, and he's showing what Christ can do in you if you will let him do it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now we, um, and another Little sister called me last night from over here, a friend to a Brother Paul Griffins, and uh, she called me up last night and told me this, almost the same thing, that she saw, she had a dream where there was a ladder, a Jacob's Ladder. She was singing that song, I'm Climbing the, because Jacob's Ladder. And then uh, there was Satan on the left side and God on the right side, and it was a pull. And I understand Sister Elizabeth and, and Brother Thomas and Andrew went over to the Griffins' house last night and they listened to a tape. And she got stirred up and she called me last night and said she just wanted to talk with me and didn't know what to say. So I knew that God was dealing with her heart and her mother was outside trying to listen and whatnot. And there we led her to the Lord. Amen. So I saw you pray for her. Her name is Trish. That God will because grant her the time and that she'll be able to come to service. And another little one that was over here with Sister Elizabeth, she was supposed to be baptized today but because her mother won't let her come. And I told the little sister, I said, isn't it strange your mother doesn't mind if you put on a mini skirt and have drugs and also go out with boys and also wild parties? She said, that's absolutely right, but she rebels for you to come to this church. Can you imagine how a mother could have that kind of a insanity not to want her daughter to be a, a handmaiden of the Lord? So, but we can pray that God will break that power. Amen. So now we thank the Lord for these good things. It's 10 minutes to 12. I want to get straight to the word of the Lord. And I want to ask you to stand with me for the reading of the word. And one other thing I have here. Um, brother Gary, the brother with one leg, he's in St. Vincent's Hospital. And the visiting hours is from 2 to 8 p.m. And the room is 469. And he wants to thank you all for your prayers. So those of you that because can visit him, it would be, it would be wonderful to go and see him. And it'll be uh, on the bulletin board downstairs. Let's turn to the word of the Lord. I'm reading from um, a text this morning. I asked Brother Joey to read that because that was the spoken word book. That was the message to set a background this morning. And I want to read now from Amos 3. The third chapter, verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Revelation 8, 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. Of half an hour. And Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of the Lord. Now let's catch the text and the subject this morning is laying right here in the 29th verse. The secret things 
that God is going to reveal to us and also has revealed to us, see, belongs unto the, the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed, the seven seals and all these things, belong unto us and to our children forever. And here's the purpose that we may do all the words of the law, this law. May God a blessing to the reading of his word. Just uh, bow our heads in a moment of prayer. Lord Jesus, I pray this morning, God, that uh, this morning as you took us up into heavenly places Wednesday, Lord God, this morning, may you uh, uh, relax the people this morning, Lord, and it makes me a little nervous, and I won't feel a tenseness from them, and let each one know, like you did here on Wednesday, that nobody's going to miss anything. Lord Jesus, they can only understand that. They think they're going to miss something that becomes saying. They can always get the tape and go back and study it. But, oh God, may they relax so the enemy don't tense them up, and then they will really miss it. So now, Lord Jesus, uh, the, we know, uh, oh God, this morning I just feel that we could come to a climax this morning, Lord, and, and this message here in New York City that we were that we have been trying to proclaim by, by revelation. And may there be one great revelation this morning to every soul in here. And may everyone know what has been going on here in New York City. And may it all be to the glory of God. Lord Jesus, come down now in fellowship with us. Breathe upon the word of the Lord. And may the angels move to their posts now, God, to cut off all unbelief and uh, 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 quiet my spirit, Lord, and the, the nervousness upon me and weariness, dear God, and I, I commit it unto thy hands. I pray, Heavenly Father, and we ask it in Jesus' name and his sake. Amen. You may be seated. i like to title this message, uh, The Mystery of the Seventh Seal. I've just been lingering, just waiting, because uh, it just wasn't right to start, you see. And I know um, I don't want to be too long with you, but I do feel that this message on my heart that, um, that well, let me put it this way. On page one in Christ is a Mystery of God Revealed, where Brother Bram, he was praying, and he said, Lord, may this message, that it would cap it all off. He's speaking about storing up food. And he was praying that this particular message would be a cap to storing to the, the food stored up that it would show that you're God and that this is your word and your truth. And on page 94, as he was singing and worshiping God, and because in the end here, he says, not knowing, of course, being spiritual, you watch spiritual things, not knowing this, God knows it, but if you turn and look at the clock, it's on the dot, two o'clock. The end of the second pull, the third pull is at hand. And I know very few knew what he was even talking about then, but the, we thought we was in the third pole when the seven seals opened up. And now uh, we read here that uh, the second pole was ending up. And later on, I begin by revelation to understand what he was talking about. Because as more messages come out, you have to wait. You see, in other words, you couldn't know what he meant then until he had finished in 65. Then you could know. So <laughs> you're not going to know what I'm saying until the message is finished. Amen. Here we go. Then if you realize that you're not going to know, then you'll just sit back, you see, and, and you'll just relax. Praise the Lord. I feel, I just keep saying it over and over again because I know that God gave such a wonderful victory last Sunday. And then I come back here, I see the same thing trying to move in again, see. I thought it was just finished with, you know, just sit back and relax. So you're not going to miss nothing because I can't show you anything, only is a revelation. And the Holy, whatever the Holy Spirit wants you to get this morning, he'll give it to you. Amen. If you could only sell on that, you, you know, just what he's going to get, that's what you're going to get. And be satisfied if it's just one spoonful this morning. Amen. Well, take your spoonful and sit back and take that. <laughs> you see, that's it. See what I mean? Now, he'll show you more later. Amen. Don't you feel him quickening that to you now? Amen. So you're not going to miss anything. You ain't going to lose nothing. Nothing you're going to lose. You're not going to, the tapes are here. It's all here. You're way ahead of the entire world already. Amen. Be satisfied. You're, let me say it again. You're already ahead of the rest of the entire world in the message. Now, please, you're, you're already ahead. They got to catch up to you. So aren't you satisfied now? 
Well, my, praise God. I mean, um, amen. Now, just relax, see? Praise the Lord. Now, um, I'm, I'm praying that a message this morning will just cap off all that I've tried to preach concerning the revelation of this message. I want God to show it to you, uh, what he showed me piece by piece over the years. And I didn't know what I was doing. He got it, see? Uh, he'll, he'll show you what he, he took eight years to show me, ten years. He'll show you in one message this morning. Amen. That's all I'm praying for, see? Amen. And then you got it, uh, you see? And then you'll know, but you'll understand when you get it, so you'll know why this is. And I'm going to preach it right to you, and you're going to know what it is. So right now, amen, see? Now when we went out to Tucson, not knowing, see, just going, feeling the will of the Lord to go for it. A, a little vacation and then preaching out there under great strain you see because this is nothing <laughs> wow amen brother it was a battle there see and because you're cause you got a background but there, there was no background whatsoever for nothing and you ask sister coleman she'll tell you see there was no kind of background at all and that's what the strain i had to preach on and i was getting about three hours sleep every night for, for 18 days, that's all the sleep I got, and I was already tired. You understand now? And that was the strain, see? And then I, just one of them things, that's all, see? So now, you don't know the strain when uh, people with intellect trying to figure out what you're talking about. That almost kills a spiritual person. They're trying to catch your words and through the senses figure out what you're saying. It's a revelation. So don't touch it, leave it alone. Amen. See? So now, um, so therefore, with that thought there, um, and going out there, and then, um, excuse me, uh, the message that was preached, and thinking about it, I know the, the middle Sunday was a rough time, you know? And then getting the, the messages back Friday and listening to them, Brother Hunt uh, uh, listened to them also, and then I saw what God had done. And first I said, well, now how could I get these tapes to each person in here? It'd take six to seven months. And by, by the time each, because each one of you got those tapes, it'd take about six to seven months. And there's no kind of way you could even set it up. So Brother Hunt, uh, he su uh, suggested that because we just play them here. So therefore, um, Wednesday, we're going to play the first tape. And after you hear this morning's message, and the title to the first tape is, But Now I See. <laughs> so after this morning's message, I think Wednesday, hey. all of you will see. <laughs> now there's something going on spiritual now. Yeah. See? And then the next one was uh, Every Place, Every Day. And I wrote something down here. I see my brother Vincent here. I wrote it down and left my mind. But I got you, brother. Happy to see him back in the house of the Lord after having a operation. We're happy to see Brother Vincent back here this morning. And so now, um, then the next message being um, every place, every day. And that was the one where the enemy fought with all he was worth. And it's one that uh, Brother Green had to send out because he, uh, that's his Sunday morning message which he sends out. And that was a message that I preached pure word, the promises of God. And they didn't know what I was talking about. It was the heart of straining and pushing and whatnot. Then that night I, I preached, uh, who can but prophesy? And then on that message there, the, ran into the, the devil with all force came at me because I mentioned, because the intelligence, the Holy Spirit, the promise, and he tried to cut off that promise, you see. And, but you'll hear the tape, when I heard it back, boy, the power of God just went right straight on through there. I didn't even know it because when you're under that strain, you don't know what you're saying really because your mind goes away from you and the mind of the Lord moves in. And before I even went out, the Lord said, I'll give you a mouth and I'll give you wisdom. And when I heard back each tape, I saw the wisdom of God and the wisdom of God is going to be, re is going to be a, a reveal to you this morning. I said, it's going to be. Every one of you are going to understand it this morning, see? So I know that. So therefore, there's nothing to get tense and excited about. Amen? And then the, the last message, and then uh, Brother Perry twice not understanding what I said, and he came behind me two times trying to correct and 
make everything all right, but he missed miss what I said, see. And so I said nothing uh, on that middle Sunday there in the morning and night, and it was about the interpretation of the, I said, the lion roars. I says, and uh, we have, the trouble is in the message that men are trying to uh, defend a lion with their interpretation of the message. I said, just open up the cage and let that lion roar out his own interpretation. Everybody caught it, but Brother Perry missed that. <laughs> you see, so he thought I was saying that you don't have to defend the word. I didn't say that. I said, defend the word with your interpretation. That's altogether different. And then I was speaking about being numb. And then uh, an elder brother came and told me the following Saturday about the, the remark, the intelligence, and, shi and types and shadows. And when I put those four in a row, numbness, where the enemy tries to move with a shiver and a sensation. I said, there it was right there. And the interpretation of the message, there it is right there, a second point. And types and shadows, which is the word. See? And then the, the last one, the promise for now, the intelligence, Jesus Christ. The enemy hit those four points with a full blast. And now you know what I was on. And then tried to kill us and run us off the road Sunday evening before I could bring it to a climax. But God uh, intermingled all things for good. And then that Sunday night, to me, it was a masterpiece having all these books and whatnot trying to explain what I meant. And Brother Perry saying, we'll be here to midnight with all those spoken word books. And then not touching one of them, Holy Spirit came back and hit those four points himself and said everything that I wanted to say. I didn't even know it until after. So I tell you, it runs from the morning, unity of the faith, to that night, who can but prophesy? And then every promise, then who can but to, we could prophesy, but now I see rather, and then run into uh, the last message, there is a river. That was the last one, and showing them that the intelligence is the Holy Spirit is here. And so God got the victory. And realizing that the message was preached on those five tapes. Everything that's been preached here for 10 years was preached in five tapes. That's what I'm trying to explain to you this morning. So I'm praising God for that. It wasn't me, it was Jesus Christ. Now, we are reading here now. Um, we are uh, speaking as to uh, mature people that can receive the word by spiritual revelation. Now, uh, this mystery, which we were predestinated to the adoption of sons and daughters. So let me read here from page 17. I'm just going to take my time because I took about 10 years to get to this spot. So I might as well take my time this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so now, um, if you want to mark down these pages where, now, I, can't, I cannot preach this tape. It's impossible. You know that. So I only sat down this morning, it was very hard to put this together, because I had to sit and wait for the Holy Spirit to go over all these pages and put a message out and take what he was saying here. And then last night, uh, because the Holy Spirit showed me a lot of things, what Brother Bram had said here, and I want to bring it out to you this morning. Now, um, I want to read from page 17. Now God had a purpose and a hidden mystery. And that's what I want to speak on to the church this morning. Now, I'm teaching this morning. And I might get some, start eating some big grapes. Amen. So, therefore, don't pay me no mind. See, when I get the inspiration strikes me. But you got to teach it so you can get it. And that's what I want to speak on to this church this morning. The hidden mystery of God that he had in his mind before the world ever began. And how that it's unfolded itself right down to this present hour that we're living. See? And then you will understand clearly, then, see, on, I believe, what is being done. Now watch. God's great mystery of how is a secret. He kept it a secret. Nobody knowed nothing about it. Even the angels didn't understand it. See, he didn't reveal it. Excuse me. That's the reason under our seventh mystery, when the seventh seal was opened, there was silence. Jesus, when he was on earth... They wanted to know when he would come. He said, it's not even the son himself don't know when it's going to happen. See, God has this all to himself. It's a secret. And that's the reason there was silence in heaven for a space of a half an hour. And seven thunders uttered their voices, and John was even forbidden to write it. 
the coming of the Lord. That's one thing he hasn't revealed yet. This is in 63 now, of how he will come and when he will come. It's a good thing that he doesn't. No, he has showed or revealed that it in every type that's in the Bible. Now, here we go. Here it is right here now. This is what the Holy Spirit showed me. I was rejoicing here. Therefore, the entire Bible is the revelation of God's mystery in Christ. See? Now, now here it is now. This is the point the Holy Spirit will strike to you sitting here. The entire Bible is an expression of one goal that God had. One purpose he wanted to achieve in the entire Bible. Now here it is. And all the acts of the believers in the Bible has been in type and expressing what God's great goal is. And now in this last day, he has revealed it and shows us. And God's help, we'll see it right here this morning, what the Lord has had in his mind all along and has expressed it. Therefore, you can see the great meaning of what it's been to know this. He's speaking about his own self. And then try to bring it to the people, see? That's like me this morning. <laughs> Amen. And then you don't, because you haven't went into details and tried to explain as God has revealed it to me. Now, he's saying here, I'm coming back up on this quote, just we're teaching and everything, everybody settled down. The entire Bible, I'm just, now the Holy Spirit's coming back and striking the different points that he showed me this morning. The, the entire Bible is the revelation of God's mystery in Christ. Every word of it. The entire Bible. The entire Bible is an expression of one goal that God has had. One purpose he wanted to achieve in the entire Bible. And all the acts of the believers in the Bible has been in type and expressing what God's goal is. And when I got that one, I says, my, one goal, one purpose. Jesus said, search the scriptures, the scriptures. They testify of me. Then, then here it is right here, testifying. Oh, I know you're getting it. Everyone from Abel, amen, all the way down to John were testifying of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Christ is a principal theme of the entire Bible. St. Luke 24 wrote to Emmaus, the six-hour sermon, when he had, when he come back in the resurrection, and they not knowing the scriptures, they testify of him. They said what he would do and how he would do it. And Christ comes back around, and he's old fools and slow of heart. Amen. Let me uh, read the scripture here. As long as you got time, I won't have to rush. Do you mind staying here to five o'clock? Wonderful. Amen. Now let's go. Praise the Lord. I, feel, I felt shackled, you know. Now, if you get hungry and you have to go, it's all right. You just get up and leave. That's all right. You can pick up the tape after. But if I know I'm not being rushed, then it'd be all right, see? So now, um, St. Luke 24, uh, 24, um, and then, uh, then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe, to believe, see? All that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And here it is, beginning at Moses, which is Genesis, you understand? And all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Himself. Amen. Then he is the principal theme of the entire Bible. Amen. There he is. Then he, he come back in St. Luke 24, 45. And after he came in the room and showed himself, then he opened their understanding to all of the scriptures, to the principal theme of the entire Old Testament. He opened their understanding to himself in every part. In other words, he was in Moses, he was in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all Gideon and Barak, and he was that was him. And then when Brother Brown was speaking here, and I saw what he was talking about. Amen. The word, this word is the revelation of Jesus Christ. If you want to know the secret of what Brother Bram was talking about, read the word. There's the secret. Amen. Christ being revealed in his word through these little people 
who didn't know what they were doing. They were just living like you are every day. They didn't know, they didn't have no revelation as to what they were doing. But without knowing it, they were typing out Jesus Christ in their day. That's what the Holy Spirit struck me with last night. Oh, you get it? Now everybody got it. And then the inspiration coming, I said, my, that's what Brother Brown was talking about. It's the word. It's not going to this place and that place. It is the word of God from Abel, all, Adam all the way through. Think of it, those women and those men in Hebrews 11, that's Christ. That was the spirit of the living God in them people, moving them and making them take the word against everything. He lived in caves and dens and it was sort of sunder, beaten and everything else. What was it? It was the word. Those women like Sarah and them, it was the word in those sisters. Amen. Not like those old Moabite women. Praise God. With the hair hanging down all straggly and all because corns on their hands from working. And those were daughters of God. That, that was the word, the spirit of Christ in those women. In those men. But they didn't know it. They didn't have the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Amen. But they was doing what comes naturally. They were children of God. They love the word. They put it on the ears and the head and everywhere. That's all it is. There's your secret under the seventh seal. The sword, the word. Coming to a bride. To live for eight years. Uh, praise the Lord. Take off my coat, we're home this morning. Amen. Praise God. Christ is the theme. Now we got it? Now do you understand the man of God don't know what he's doing? Each child and each age, don't know, they just, they're living naturally. It's natural for us to get saved and baptized. It's natural for the women want to clean up. It's natural for the seed now. I hope you got that. The seed. Therefore, if, if, if the mess has got to plead with you to look like Christ, something's wrong with you. But not like the olden time ones. They didn't have the Holy Ghost, but something in the heart was making them live right. Righteousness. And God revealed the word, that they, the secret of God, that they might do all the things in the law. Well, what about Malachi 4? Reveal the secret of God that he'd have a bride on the word to do every word in the Bible without being told. A, a revelation, an inspiration striking that you want to do it. Amen. Now we got it. Amen. Now I know what I was staggering around here for 10 years. Couldn't help it. Something was driving me on. And the revelation kept coming and kept coming and kept coming every day. Something else was happening. I was living naturally, going to work and doing like what you're doing. But there was something pulsating. Spirit of Christ. Amen. In all of us, something pulsating. You got it? That's why we're here. Amen. I didn't know what I was doing no more than what you knew. I didn't know what this secret was. But I know one thing. The word came in and here come. Now I know what was going on. I'm looking back. Amen. Praise God. Christ is the theme. The entire Bible. My praise the Lord. God, now this great mystery. As he spoke, as you read this morning here. So I'm just, I got a lot of notes, but I'm letting the Holy Spirit lead. Amen. Even the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now is being made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. My, now you're going to know who come into you in the form of seven thunders to live the word. We're going to get into it now. Amen. So now the threefold purpose of God, and Brother Bram's saying here, now, um, notice now, God has had a threefold purpose. Here's a mystery here now. In this, in this great mystery secret, God in this great mystery secret that he had before the world began, he's got a threefold purpose in it. 
And now, what we want to go on upon this morning is, what is that threefold purpose? See? Now, I believe by the help of God, he's present and he'll show it to us. Now, if he had this threefold purpose, we want to find out what is this threefold purpose. The first thing that was that God wanted to reveal himself to the people. Amen. He couldn't do it as a great Jehovah God who, who covered all space and time and eternity. He could not. He's too great to be revealed to people. Excuse me. And he speaks about fatherhood and so forth. Now, he wanted to express himself. That was one of his three, that was one of his great threefold purposes, was to express himself. This is number one. Identify himself with human beings to reveal himself in Christ. That's number one. Second, to have the preeminence in his body of believers, that is his bride, that he might live in his people and get them back because they was lost like, like Adam and Eve. And the only way to get them back. Now, if doubt took the entire race away, how can, how can you get back by doubt? I don't understand it. How can you come back to God with doubting, unbelief? That's why Brother Brown preached the way he preached. It's impossible to come back by doubting, unbelief in the word, when that was the very thing that, because they had lost their salvation through doubting one word. Well, how are you going to get back by doubting one word? It's impossible. Amen. See? And, um, and Brother Brown goes on saying here, God's great purpose, reveal himself in heaven, First, to, to reveal himself in Christ, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, then bring that fullness of Godhead bodily into a people that he could have the preeminences, the oversight, the leading, and he calls it a prisoner to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And number three, to restore the kingdom to its rightly position that fell by sin by the first Adam. My God. Moving through Abel to have the preeminence. Amen? Amen? God moving through every son before the flood to have the preeminence. Amen. Moving through Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and uh, Joseph and M Moses and all through them and the prophets to have the preeminence. Amen. Just so that Christ could get out. Amen. Amen? And then those people acting normally and naturally because they were part of the word in their generation. And they were just doing what comes naturally. That's why Brother Bram said, if you have the spirit of Beethoven, because Beethoven, then you do what he did. Amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you have the spirit of Christ, you do what he did. If you're a seed of God, you do what they did here in the Bible, which is our types and shadows. It's natural. It's not no a, a chomping down and trying to make you see it. No, it's a, it's a revelation. Yeah. Upon the rock of this revelation, I'll build my church as to who what? As to who Christ is. The Word. Yeah. Amen. And the Word is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, he, so there, there was, now there's his great mystery. That's how he got Christ into the people through the Word. Amen. That's his great threefold purpose to get Christ, the Word, into you the hope of glory. Amen. See? Get the people to Christ, not to the church. Now I want to lay something down here. Page 64, if you're taking it down, and 65. And this one struck me last night. Make it his mystery to, known to his bride, his bride tree, the redeemed by Christ. Going back home to be restored back. Listen. So many people's got the wrong conception to convert people to to Christianity and to its government. Government is not God's thought at all. You say, or we make a, a convert to Christianity by its government? That's not it. Well, they're, they're not supposed to drink and they're not supposed to lie. And he's speaking about the Mohammedans and also Africa and them, the African tribes, the Shungai, they put us to shame. That's what he said. Now notice, God making himself known. We're not supposed to make converts to Christianity by a government. Jesus said at that day, at that day, the revelation is made known, you will know that I'm in the Father, and the Father in me, and I in you. So therefore, it struck me, I said, that's it. It's not church order. It's not uh, smoking and drinking and letting down your dress and also paying your tithes. That's government. That's the government of the church. 
You see what you got in this message now? Paying the tithes and the women stop cutting their hair and letting down their dresses and also because obeying their husband. What is that? Many women do it and they're sinners and do it better. Do it better. It is knowing Christ. It's not government. Praise God. It's not the church order. It's not doing it just right because not because coming here Sunday morning and also Wednesday and getting the tape and a book and what's not. That's intellectual conception that God slayed Sunday morning on the battlefield. So revelation between you and Christ that he's come into you and you and you and him and having a love affair. That's what it is. You love the word of God. You have got to have it. Praise God. Let me get something over here. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise. There's a love affair here. It is right here. I'm going all over this book here. Amen. Notice, secondly, the manifest of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Look, what was once God's great secret, great mysterious secret in his mind is now put in the hearts. Remember the hearts Sunday morning of the believer? That is the body of Christ. What was God's what was God's once great secret in his mind before the foundation of the world is now made manifest? Think of it. Oh, I'm sure we don't get it. I can't see it the way I ought to, but I'm sure you don't see it. But God's great mystery, here it is now, men and women now, see, what the, the eternal God had as a mystery has now been unfolded in Jesus Christ, then was given out down to his church of what was once in God's mind is now in the body of Christ. Can you imagine the, the, the thunders that was in God's that nobody knows is, is in us? It thundered. But I'm going to explain to you why. <sighs> Praise God. Jesus, here it is. Jesus making love to his, because to the church, his bride, whispering secrets to her. Amen. Amen. You know how you tell your wife things. You know, the little girl you're going to marry, because you love her so much, you just tell her the secrets and get her up next to you and love you and everything. You know how it is. That's what God, Christ, is doing to the church. See, he's letting her know the secrets. Just the secrets, not these flirters. I mean his wife. All right now. Amen. You got it? Not the ones that you, because they walk in here, you got to tell them, stop this and stop that. That's a flirt with the world. But I mean the man and woman that's, that has met God. And the world, they have renounced the world. They don't even want the world. Then to them, he whispers secrets. Not to the ones who come in here through the government. Not to the government. Not to paying tithes and offerings and because, because not cutting your hair, letting down your dress. Not to that. Many women in the world do that. Not to that. But to those with a revelation. And they, so, they love God and they so see that he is her lover. And he is trying to get the preeminence, the oversight, the leading to the word of God in her. And then she just lives and acts and walks and talks and you don't have to explain everything to them. They don't come to you in the back asking all kinds of silly questions. They are doing it, doing it. They do it from the heart. They want to do it. Oh, praise his name. See, it's a revelation. Converts are coming into the, the church government by intellectual conception. Church ought to pay your tithes, believe and whatnot. And they are preaching in this message that this message is the Holy Ghost. See, oh, that's the Baptist doctrine. When you believe the message because you got the Holy Ghost. That's Baptist doctrine. Every one of you know it. When you believe you got it. The prophet has said it over and over again. It's uh, something, a new birth. It's a birth. You die. And God comes in and shakes you and says, move over here. I'm in here now. Amen. All those things have passed away. I'm living in here now. That's it. Amen. That's it's a revelation. Praise God. The church is the blood of Christ. We're his blood. Amen. By the Spirit. 
This, you are the blood atonement here. Right here. The blood atonement is here this morning. Amen? Well, who is the atonement? Christ is the atonement. The sacrifice, that's in you and me. That's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That baptizes us into his body that recognizes only his word. Prisoners to the word of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The secret. Amen. Here. Page 29. Speaking about heavenly places. Ephesians 1, 5. I was preaching this out there. They didn't know what I was talking about. Amen. Predestinate us into the, uh, the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. According to the good pleasure of his will. Predestinated. There's the mystery. See before Christ or anything else was ever on earth. You see this great mystery? That he chose the bride, knowing Eve would fall from disbelieving the word, knowing that she would fall, but he would choose a bride that would not fall, that would hold to that word regardless of what all the rest of the world had to say about it. They would hold to that word. They were predestinated to stand there. The adoption of children by Jesus Christ predestinated the church to that glorious stand. And you're standing that's a, a predestinated stand. Amen. I have other pages at which I'll just skip them. I think you understand what is now uh, page 55, 56, and 57. The preeminence of Christ. Let me uh, pick it up. I don't want to miss something here. So I want to make sure what it is. It's the secret of the mystery. Because to the bride and 55, 56. Well, here's a, a good one here. Page 56. And in there, there be a time come forth when he can express himself in fullness of his Godhead deity. Uh, oh my, what the anointed man, now the anointed people, you're anointed. Oh my, to bring back the anointed bride and the bridegroom, anointed, but why? Accepting what Eve turned down, coming back with the anointing of the word, because he said, my word is spirit. See, anointed with the word, what Eve turned down. Amen. Uh, why? He has the, the preeminences. God fully manifested in Jesus Christ. God's great secret of his revelation. This great light of revelation has always blinded the wisdom of the world. Praise our God. Page 67. <coughs> Excuse me. Declare him. Actions. Page 70. I'm just going to skip a lot of this here. I had it down here marked before. Now we see then, see this great revelation here, God's great mystery being unfolded that's been hid since the foundation of the world. But here it is now. But uh, because a prefigured it all the way down through, down through the ages, it was prefigured by God in tight. Now, I'm going to pick up where, he, where I'm reading from here now. God's great mystery here down through the ages? Yes. He has been slowly unfolding this mystery. Praise God. Now, do we get the point here now? God, all the way down from Abel, not the way God is. He don't want to show his secret all at once. So he slowly unfolds his secret. And in 1965, they tried to get it. Eve did all at once. And he took all, all that time through the Bible to unfold it generation after generation after generation. Then he come back when, from A.D. 33, and he began to because unfold it again. Amen. Amen. Through the seven churches. And they probed at it, trying to get the quick answer, looking for a lucky gold strike. But I've sank my shaft down into the vein of Jesus Christ, and I'm not moving. I don't care about a strike over there or a strike over there. I have struck it rich. And I shall not be moved. Amen. I struck it rich, brother. So now, down through the ages, God typing himself out through Moses and Joseph and also all the prophets. Amen. All of those things type him just in type, but yet the mystery was hid. Let me strike uh, page 32 here now. Now, all those things type him. David and Joseph and all these things here, doing actions, not knowing what they were doing. You understand now? Just doing what came naturally to them. And they was, didn't know it in their generation. They were typing out Jesus Christ. Think on it now. Now you know what you've been doing for the past eight years or so. 
Amen. You've been typing out Jesus Christ, the word on the earth. Praise God. What a, what a ministry. Anointed Messiah is on the earth. Just walking and living. Oh, that's what he wanted. And, and look when he did it. Uh, against the time when it's almost humanly impossible to live right. Is that right? Amen. Look at the anointing out here on the devils out here. The, a good person can hardly stay good anymore. The love of many has waxed cold. And against all of that, God anointing a people, a bride. By the, now you know why it takes the word. Suppose you didn't have the word and you had a feeling last night. Bro, you gone the next day with that feeling. But the word anointing, Lord, I'll be with you always to the end. Not a feeling, a shiver. It's the word. The Pentecostal one, that shiver, that feeling, that good feeling, and speaking in tongues. But the word has brought you through. Praise God. All those things type them just in type. But yet the mystery was hid. Their man didn't know what they were doing. They only knew that they were led by the Spirit to do something. Oh, how I love Jesus. Amen. That's all they knew. That's what you're doing. You feel led to, to do that. That's Christ. If it's in the Word, what are you worrying about? Should I? Should I not? Should I? You know what's in the Word. You read the Word of God. You hear the prophet. Amen. Why should I? Should I not? And, and do a little dance? Do it in the name of the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. It's in the Word. It's God and you're doing it. And you take a step and the did, did, did devil kick your foot back. But take that step in the light. Amen. Stepping in the light of the word of God. Don't be all shook up. They did it. They didn't care if somebody criticized. So you're going to be criticized. So what? Amen. So what you criticize? They ain't got one thing to do with it. You're saved. Amen. What's they got to do with it? Amen. So they criticize. Only growing pains. It shows that you're different from them. That's all it means. You want to do right, and they want to do evil. So when you do right, they criticize. I mean, in the church also, you know. <laughs> Amen. Got that one in. Praise the Lord. Now, you see, we could teach each one of those prophets and bring their lives out to show it express Jesus Christ perfectly. Amen. Exactly. You, uh, yet, here it is, never given his secret in full. Now, that's why I say this morning, don't try to know anything I'm saying. He's not going to give it to you in full. He's going to reveal it to you as he wants to. Amen. Amen. See? Never knowing the secret in full, waiting for to make it known in the last days. Our days. Amen. As he promised. Waiting for it to be fully comprehended before he could express it. If he told the whole thing because the Bible's written in mysteries. Jesus thanked the Father for it. See, it was wrote in mysteries. Amen. All those things type him. Yet the mystery was hid. Then no man, didn't, they didn't know what they were doing. I'm bringing, I'm, I'm laying it down. Now they only knew that they were led by the Spirit to do something. They are led by the Spirit to do something. And we are led by the Spirit to do what we are doing here today. That's why we're here this morning, see. Now, uh, since A.D. 33, led by the Spirit in every age to do something, not knowing fully what you're doing. But faith makes you do it. Amen. See, I, mean, I don't know what I'm doing all the time, but I, do, I feel led to do it. Amen. Then I find out it turns out right. Amen. That ain't me, because if I would figure out through my five senses, I'd never do it. Now, if I do this here because this is going to happen there, I start reasoning the whole thing out. When you're finished, well, there ain't nothing left. <laughs> You didn't figure the whole thing out, prepaid it, and figure this one out, and so and so, he'll be there. No, I better not because, uh, because he won't have his car. But if we take so and so's car, that's foolishness. Amen. 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 And you know, you go through these things. Amen. That's not faith, just do it. Amen. Amen. Should I ask Brother Coleman? I, no, well, I, maybe I should. No, you ask Jesus Christ in you. <laughs> not to ask me. I'm asking the same person in me. I'm, I'm praying and every day, Lord, lead me. I can't lead you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let him lead you. It led them and without the Holy Ghost. I just read it to you. Their actions. Without the Holy Ghost. 
It led them. They didn't even have the Bible and the tapes. They had to go to the temple, and some were scattered all around. They only went up to that great temple because three times a year the, the males went up there, and yet they had something. Amen. And we got the books, tapes, uh, we, got, we got preaching, church, everything. Oh, my, I don't know. Amen. See? Led by the Spirit, see? But something in you pulsating, and you're trying to get the preeminence. Now, there's the mystery of your seven seals now. Because now here we go. Now, the coming, I'm on page 33. Now, the coming of the Lord is a mystery. We don't know when he's coming, but he's coming. But we know he's coming, see? And so was all the mysteries of God waiting for this last day. After it's already been completed, then he reveals. He shows what he's done. Oh, my, and never gave his mystery in full. Now, remember this here. He never changes from this statement here. He hides it in a mystery, and he drops a revelation upon those who are elected to see it. Amen? Even because all of those different angels never had it in full, Paul caught it, and out he went. Because Arrhenius and also Polycarp, they never had it in full. They caught a revelation. It left a lot of loose ends. But along comes a little humble prophet and gathers up all the loose ends. And... Tell us that we could comprehend. We have all of them for us to, to begin to walk in 1966. My God, how can we fall knowing the seven seals of God, the entire Bible? There's no excuse for us, friends. No. Uh -uh. Those people didn't even have no Bibles. They had a revelation and they went with it. Now you see. Whew, my. Amen. See. It's the truth. It's the scripture. And here it is right on this tape here. And then this week here, the Holy Spirit bringing us back here. Do you get it? If you fail in trying to figure it out, come back here. And you find that it's just the word of God in you living out a life. How humble, how simple. That's all it is. Now, there's nothing. Because you, you read the book or you heard the tape. And I, I, I went through there. And I tell my wife, I... Ask God to show me. I know with something simple in here, and the other one is perfect weakness, perfect strength. There's a simple thing laying right in there, see? And then I saw what he was doing here, and I began by maybe 12, 14 pages just on one theme, revelation, because like identification, preeminences, that's all he was saying. He took a long time to lay it out. That's all he ever did there, see? Now, now here, like the mysteries, like the seven mysteries of the seven last seals, the mysteries of them. The seals had done been broken. Every age had come down. And there they left a lot of scattering. And God, not willing that it should be scattered, he comes back and picks up those things, those doctrines they started, and brought it on out and revealed the whole thing. Same thing he's doing now in revealing the mystery of Christ. Same thing he's doing now in revealing the mystery of Christ, how he was God's threefold purpose for the church. Oh my, let it out, reveal. Now, Brother Branham, reveal the mystery of the seal. The seal itself had been broken long time ago. You understand it now? He revealed the mystery. And the mystery on the first seal was Jesus Christ in a message to the church. Coming into the people and living themselves out. Jesus Christ under the second seal, the mystery of that seal was Christ in that church. And the Antichrist coming against it all the time. That's all there ever was in there. And then other men coming with, with their own ideas, church government, dogmas and creeds, and leaving a lot of scattering and loose ends. Amen. And then the seventh angel comes along and opens up six mysteries. Six seals. Here, I have a book on that. Proving this word. The last page, page 56. Do you, do you believe the truth? They are the truth. And you accept it not because I said it, because God said it. Do you believe that we're living in the last days when the Son of Man was to be manifested? That would be all the word that is gathered up through Luther, Wesley, Baptist, and all that. And the Pentecostal all gathered up to the revelation of what it has been, the seventh seal, the seventh angel, here it is, was to open the sixth seal mystery. 
is gathered up in the Son of Man. His fullness of time has come to the fullness of his word to manifest the fullness of his body. That is the word. That is the spoken word made manifest by the word reveals the word. The spoken word made manifest by the word itself coming down reveals the word. <laughs> spoken word made manifest by the pillar of fire the word coming down and he revealed all what it was very simple it revealed the word and the word is the revelation of Jesus Christ the entire Bible my heart God put it over on the devil and they thought it was some great thing it is the word so humble and simple my God I just love it like this because I know what I've been doing for 10 years. What a faith came into me yesterday when I knew what I was doing. And all the time against the word and all the time it was God trying to get to preeminence in New York City. That's all he was trying to do. Get to preeminence in our lives to manifest the word. To get the promises to us. Praise God. See how God's great threefold mystery, because Christ's great purpose rather, the mystery hidden, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, it ties right into the seven seals, the mysteries of them, the mystery of this entire Bible, how God wanted to have the preeminence in all of, because of his people in the, in the Old Testament here. Then it, it come right out here on the day of Pentecost and went into seven church ages and sealed with seven seals. And the prophet of God comes along and, and he reveals the mysteries under each seal. The seal itself broke. Then if the prophet was to reveal the entire Bible, the mystery of this Bible here being Christ, on this message, capped off the second pull. You got it? He revealed, on this tape right here, he, he said, let me cap it off to show it's the word. And he capped it off. And so at this Bible, even this mystery, which was hid, amen, it is the mystery of it is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So he revealed the mystery of the Bible, then went on and into seven seal mysteries, amen, because he first he had the six seal mystery and then he revealed this. Then he went waiting for that seventh seal mystery, the mystery of the seal. Then we found out that the mystery on the, uh, uh, this entire Bible was Christ and the mystery under those six seals was Christ redeeming his people. Amen. And the word living in them. Then what is the mystery under the seventh seal? You got the answer. Christ coming down present tense day by day and redeeming us every day. By the word. To make sure, in other words, suppose the Mayan age moved in and all we had was those gifts. And we were still Pentecostal babies. Everyone would be in the insane institution. And you know it. Because you wouldn't know what to do. But he came down himself as the word. And revealed himself as the word to take us through. And all we had to do was just, oh, because just read the word, also hear the tapes and obey it. Then... He would be getting the preeminence in us. And that preeminence itself on the earth would show that you saw your name in the Lamb's book of life. Because you walk in the earth. As a predestinated word of God on the earth, your actions typing out Jesus Christ, the word of God. Wives love your husband, I mean husband love your wives and so forth. And love one another right here on the earth doing that. And that's all he asked for. That's all. See, now it's the mystery of it. See? So now we see then that um, the Old Testament Christ getting the, the preeminence, each type expressing Jesus Christ exactly, yet never given his secret in full, waiting for it to be made known in the last days, waiting for it to be fully comprehended. Amen. See? Search the scriptures, they testify of me. They tell you what I am. See, now this, then comes the mystery, praise God, the mystery of the seventh seal. Then if God has always uh, 
broken a seal and revealed a revelation under that seal and those and those people serve God under each seal and because when they die he seals them away a, a temporary judgment falls upon the earth and then he drops a, a, another revelation a messenger goes forth and also calls out God's people a temporary judgment falls and those people are sealed away all the way down never yet fully revealing his secret but in the last days making it known to William Branham to what he was doing all the time and then Brother Bram telling us that he that seventh seal open, but it's a total secret. It's the end times uh, a seal, and when it goes forth, it's connected with seven thunders to the coming of the Lord, how he comes and when he comes. And we know that he has already come. Well, then how do we know? Well, how did he come? He himself said on the seventh seal, because I won't even get it now, because you know what it is. He said, the sword in Sabina Canyon, see, bring on this holy vesture, it's the word. He said, see the secret, the word. See the mystery, the word. This was the portion that he had blocked off of that tape. You remember that there? It's in that portion right there. It's the word. Then the word, then the seventh thunder mystery would bring back the headstone. Is that right? Then the headstone has come back in the form of a, a shout. And he's here all the time. He's here this morning. Amen. In the form of a message. Amen. Boy, he said it'd be a total secret. See? Amen. And he says you're not going to be able to know it through your senses. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Oh, my. Yeah, I got it right in here. Yes, sir. I caught that one also in here. Praise God. Yes, sir. Just take your time here. Here it is, page 44. Now you see, so therefore there's no school, no theologian, no teachers in the Bible among any school that knows anything about it. They cannot know nothing about it. It's impossible for them to know anything about it. Here it is. God has hid the senses of knowing. <laughs> God has hid the senses of knowing it from the very elected teachers and everything else is a personal all oh, the little illiterate ones oh my he loves them oh I just love to say this here yeah, amen brother Tony God has hid the senses of knowing what sense imagination memory affection conscience and reasoning power. So sit back and relax. You will never know it. Straining and straining and straining. It's a revelation. Sit back and let God crack you in the forehead. And then you got it. I hope this morning you finally got it. Now, let me read it again now. God has hid the senses of knowing it from the very elected teachers and everything else. It's a personal, individual affair with the person that Christ has revealed to them. Amen. There you are. There's your church. Two or three of those gather. He's in the midst. There he is. All oh, praise God. And if you say he has been uh, revealed to me, then the life that Christ produced here in the Bible all the way through now. Amen types and so forth, you know, like the, all the way through is a life, following the word of God, not do's and don'ts, and also church government, that, forget about that, it's about life, amen, then the life that Christ has produced here in the Bible, that same life is in him, does not produce itself in you, then you got the wrong revelation, amen, see, now, here it is, God is known by simplicity and a revelation of Jesus Christ Excuse me. In the most illiterate person. Let that one sink now. God is known by simplicity and of revelation in the most illiterate person. Now you know what kind of ministers he got in the last days. <laughs> and you ran after those teachers. See, not your theology. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. This is page 45 here. No other rocks, revelations, accepted. 
No other things except it. No other Roman rock. No other prison rock. No other school. No other nothing. But on exactly the revelation of Jesus Christ in a new birth. He is born in there and injects his own life. And your life is gone. And the life of Christ is, is, is projecting itself through you with the preeminences to the people. That they see the very life and works and signs and wonders that he did is doing the same thing through you. Outside of that, the rest of it is not even called to it at all. My. Now you see why we need those dynamics. Amen. See? Watch God's great revelation unfolding. Now here it is. But by lack of this revelation is why we have so many different divisions among us. And so much mockery. So much division among us is because the people lack that revelation. See, they lack that revelation. Their teachers, he said. And there you are. See? So now, my... Think on it now. The most illiterate person is not who you think it should be. <laughs> it's not your genealogies. Oh, the God sure did it. Amen. He sure did it. See, it's the ego gets it. The ego revelation gets it. Well, I could tell you all some things, and Sister Coleman can tell you, all around they look for the high ones, the high and mighty ones. And they block up their church with unbelief. You try to, I said, Lane, I said, when we was out a certain place out here, I said, can you imagine me preaching when I preach to these people here, these men here, long Cadillacs and all kind of things like this here, campers and trailers and whatnot, and come and sit down in your church all starch. You better not say one word that they don't understand through the senses. Do you hear what I said? You better, not un you better not say by revelation one word that they don't understand through their senses. Amen, Brother Ben? Oh, how I love Jesus. But God, give me some humble people in New York City. Amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. They believe. They don't understand it. They believe it. Amen. Now you see there's something special about New York. He put all of us together here. Amen. I went out there the other place there. Wow. When I tried to preach through there. Forget about it. Census. You understand? And so here is a revelation of Jesus Christ. The eagle. And the ministers bringing over the old ecclesiastical way of doing it in the Pentecostal age. Through study and the intellect. Bring it over here, and a little old eagle that don't know his ABCs. Blessed out of revelation I didn't heard from my theophany. They don't even know what he's even talking about. Amen? There you are. Praise God. So now what happens? Uh, this, this, the seventh seal, seven seals left a lot of loose ends. Malachi 4 comes back around and reveals the mystery what happened under those seals. Amen? Then comes and brings the headstone, the sword, the word, and releases the headstone, and God takes him away. And then the headstone is himself. He's on the earth. He's a blood atonement. He wants to come into some hearts, some eagles. And no matter who you are, what you look like, he wants to come in. Right at the same time, he's bringing in a word anointing. There's a powerful St. Matthew 24, 24 anointing. The senses. You understand? And they're coming right together. The intellectual conception of the message is coming right down with the message. I'm going to show you why this morning. Amen. Then comes the revelation of the message. Now, if God has always broke a seal and let the people go by inspiration, let's say here in New York here. Now, I told my wife, I said, I don't want to speak no more. I said, this is the last day. I want to refer back to anything going on here. Feel that we should be past it after this day. But this is brought out to you that you would know what has transpired here. Amen? So we don't have to, uh, I feel I don't want to even say no more about it because when this message here, amen, goes out, if he would send it out, then Christ is on the spot, proving that on the spot. 
But this here is to be proven to you. Yes. That is the word. Amen. Amen. That's what's going on this morning. Praise the Lord. See, and after this is finished then, see, then if it should go here or there, he's on the spot in dynamics. He proves it himself out there. And you don't have to refer back to this because it's all finished with. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. See, now he opens the seal up. The people catch a revelation and they live it out in their hearts, in their lives. By, by, by revelation. Then the, the message is gone. Then God has always come back as he showed his, because his prophet, what was under those seals. Then shouldn't God come back again as the voice of the archangel and show his bride what's under the seventh seal? The loose ends that the false anointed took these loose ends and scattered it around the world. Abstinence, this here and that there and all kind of foolishness. Loose ends under the seventh seal. You got me now? Shouldn't a voice return back for one more ride? I'll ride this trail once more where they have polluted my heavenly places. Where the word is, is heavenly places. And they have brought in pollution of some man's idea and church government and, 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 and also his opinions. And the ground is polluted. I got sheep in there. And I'll get my sheep. Amen. Amen. I'll come and tell them what the revelation is. I'll tell them what's under the seventh seal. Like I'm telling you this morning. Amen. I'll tell them later. I'm telling you this morning. Amen. You get me? Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. I'm telling you this morning so you'll know what has been here. But I'll ride this trail once more around there and then all of my ministers will say the same thing. Preach the same revelation by inspiration. All oh, praise God. And I'll show what I did through Malachi 4. Amen. Praise God. The seventh angel reveals, amen, the mystery of the Lord. Praise God. This end time seed goes forth. I mean, I'll just skip all this here. Now we see this great secret. The headstone has come forth. The seventh angel to reveal the mystery of the seven seals. Amen. Should not he also reveal the seventh seal? And the word is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Then the third pull was the opening of the word. The word to open up, to come into our hearts. Now, he has revealed God's hidden mystery, the threefold purpose. Then he, then he reveals the seven seals. And Christ is the mystery of the seventh seal, the sword, the word. There will be no mimics to this, n no impersonations. Amen? Amen? Now, number seven is complete, finished. Number eight is a, a new order of things. Now, on the statue of a perfect man in 2 Peter 1, 5 through 7... The bride under the seventh seal mystery, like all the others under the six seals and all the Bible types, in obedience, expressing Christ by becoming part of the word in obedience this morning and letting Christ get the preeminence in her life, like all the rest of the seals. By her identify herself with every word, making herself weak. Perfect weakness. He's bringing it on through the word. Amen. And when we get perfectly weak, then he's able to bring his perfect strength. Amen. Now, in this very uh, deceiving age, now Satan can impersonate seven virtues. We're driving it home now. Took a long time getting here. He can impersonate seven virtues. Satan can impersonate any gift, the prophet told us. He can also impersonate faith. That's right. He can also because impersonate virtue, temperance, godliness, knowledge. Oh, yeah. Maybe you don't believe me, huh? I'll read it to you. <laughs> we got it right here in the Word. Praise God. Let me see. Amen. 20, yeah, yeah. This is blasphemous names. The, the tabernacle. Now you say, Brother Brandon, did, should we speak with tongues? Absolutely. That's gifts of God. 
But those gifts of God without these virtues in them makes a stumble block to the unbeliever. It's not accepted by God. This has to be first. And when you have faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, and brotherly love, then the Holy Ghost comes down and seals you as a unit. As the same as he seals the church as a unit, the way he makes his bride is the way he makes his, his individual. Made out of the same material like Eve was made out of Adam, a rib from the side. Here is the things that you have to have first. You can't impersonate them. You can't imitate them. They've got to be God sent and God born. Imitation only causes confusion. And he speaks about a buzz and also a blackbird, you see. Now, now get this lesson. Here is what's wrong with the tabernacle. I ought to uh, turn it on for this. Here's what's wrong with the Bram tabernacle. You see, there's two different kinds of faith, two different kinds of virtue. Are you following me now? As I had the other day, two different kinds of knowledge, two different kinds of, of temperance. One thinks it's prohibition, and they ain't got that kind of temperance that, because God's talking about. It's that ungodly, uncontrollable temper that you got in things of that type. Flashback and fuss, patience and, and so forth. There's a mockery of it, a pretending to be, a nature-giving faith, a nature-giving virtue. There's a nature given temperance and all these things are nature given is the point made now don't get quiet on me now now please don't do that now no don't, don't freeze up now see so now uh, we uh, we are here to maturity i'm trying to show you how the devil can deceive you see now here we are see now the bride in obedience, expressing Christ by becoming part of the word in obedience. Now the devil can impersonate, we just found out, seven virtues. Now you know where I'm going. Yes. Number eight is a new order. He can impersonate every gift. He can impersonate seven virtues. These are human virtues. The Christian scientists will outsmother us on these virtues. And you know that, and, and Brother Bram, he's told us that, a Christian science. Amen. You'll see a light glowing around them. Because, because I went in, as a mailman once, I went into a Christian science church, everybody was bright, looking just sweet and everything. With, those, with, with these human virtues in there by their mind, by the thought, over, other words, thought over the matter. And they just overpower it with their human minds. That can be done. It was a nature given. And you see people who are sweet, the kind old priests in the Bible. Amen. Sweet, temperance, never fuss and get mad. And knowledge of God. Whew, stand up to them without the mind of Christ. See what happens to you. <laughs> you just stand up to that knowledge and their patience and their virtue. We getting it now? Amen. So he can impersonate those things. But charity never faileth. So God, amen, let the devil come into the third pool and hit it and didn't say what it was. Just a word. Amen. And in those that's catching the word, they got it. And then they don't know what it's all about, but like the old types in the old Bible, they acted it out under silence Shh, silence silence the devil might get a hold of it he can impersonate it so brother, therefore brother Brown said there's a great secret lays under here the sword the word amen. amen and so simple is coming to you this morning wait till it goes out and around the world it's going to bust up and blast up all kind of men's opinions and he will vindicate it on the spot Christ, the third pull, speaking out behind it. But you've had it for 10 years. My, we have had it for 10 years. What was it? An action, not knowing what it was doing, but preaching it by revelation. What? Perfection, perfection, perfection. Just pulsating. I must have the preeminence in New York City. I didn't spoke it in 52 through my prophet. There's something about New York City. And I got to have the preeminence in New York City because I'm going to do something in New York City. 
I'm going to fill some people with the power of Almighty God. They're going to shake New York City and turn it upside down. And it won't be through their seven virtues. It'll be through charity. Charity never faileth. Praise God. Satan, under the seventh seal, coming to Eve. You know that. It's this, it's that. And while it was spoken to Eve, I'm going to multiply and replenish. God never revealed it. It was the word. And under the seventh seal, he says he's going to multiply the bride like it was on the day, on the day of Pentecost and replenish her. And never revealed it. Amen? But it was a spoken word. And long as she didn't tamper with that promise, it was an oncoming thing. And in the season of the dynamics, God was going to bring it to pass. And in our season of the dynamics, this message here is capping it off. The hour is up on us for the dynamics to strike it and bring the oncoming promise to pass. But Eve got sticky and reached for some wisdom. And he impersonated the knowledge of God to her. And she ate off the wrong tree. Amen? Amen. And so therefore under the seventh seal, many Eves, concubines, false anointed, went forth impersonating. They, they, Brother Brown said that they couldn't mimic it. They couldn't even know it. Because they, now, now here it is. These men are not the elected ones. There's no faith seed there. Therefore, they can only use their five human senses. How can they know it? <laughs> the teachers. How can they know it? And then the concubines that ran after Absalom in the sight up on the roof of all Israel while David was in rejection the word. What happens to them? They were wasted, used up. You understand? But the bride went with David in rejection, his wife. She's humble now. Bearing the reproach for his name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For the, what's his name we found out the other day? His person, his nature, his personality, him. Who's that? The word, the sword. I don't know what else to tell you, brother. Praise God. God reveal it to you. It's the word of God. Amen. However, it's a revelation. He goes forth on the, with the intellectual conception of the word. Goliath got him pinned down. Amen. We, we went out to battle Sunday morning and slayed him. And hit him in the head with the rock of the salvation stone. That Christ is present tense uh, right now redeeming you. Revelation upon revelation. That is your present tense redemption. It's going on this morning. That's why I don't jump ahead. Just take it one at a time. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for let this little seed just now. Thank you, Lord. He'll pile more up on top of it. But don't get ahead of me. Don't try to figure out, do I have those seven natural virtues? I caught it all over the place. Now, I know the devil told you, that's me. My, that's not you. I, I was only bringing out to you how he has ruined the church. That's what, it, what, what the Holy Spirit is bringing out to you this morning. That's all he's doing. So if you can't stay in a revelation and you fall down, how are you going to take the full blast of the word under the dynamics? Boy, you'll melt. If you can't take this little revelation here. Amen? Now, I don't know what to, how you going to take the word. It'd be impossible to take the word. See? Now it's a, a revelation. He almost deceives a very elected under the uh, greening period. That's the only time he can work with the seed when it's green. He can't work when it's a mature gold because golden brown because the dynamics is there with it. Amen. Amen. See? So by revelation, the bride catches the, the revelation of the seventh seal and all she ever gets that I should, I should do thus and so in the word. So she does it. She don't understand anything else. She don't run here and go there and go over there. She just tries to faithfully stay where she's at her post and do the word. And then she keeps getting this in. God blesses her in the word. And she's happy. She's having a love affair. And he's giving her secrets. Revelation atop of revelation. And not knowing exactly what she's doing, but she loves the, she loves the word. Not a church government. 
Satan, he can impersonate that, see? But he cannot impersonate divine love. Amen. He can come all the way through those seven virtues. Now, under the silence period, he said he might give away the secret. And he didn't want to give away the secret, see? So now we've got two different kinds of virtues. And, and one faith is under the same Matthew 24, 24, a religious spirit. And to that it is added six virtues. Man, what, because number six are what we can do. And under this one, they'll speak in tongues, shout, and preach and do everything else. In the message. Amen. And there's another one coming right alongside of it. The bride. Amen. And they're coming along together. Right here. Come along together. One is based on Acts 2.38 faith. See? Now, humanly speaking, we're adding six virtues during this greening period. And there's loose ends everywhere all over the message. See? And the impersonators don't know where they're going at. Therefore, they have to watch you to figure out what you're going to say and what you're going to do. Then they try to do that. Because my own wife sitting right here at this funeral service saw this poor sister writing down what this man said a wife should do, writing it down, when it should be in here. She was writing it down. She saw that out there, you see? Now, they take all these strange odd things. Now, Christ is the mystery of God revealed, is hid from the senses of knowing, and from the very elected teachers. Can you imagine that God hid it from the very elected teachers so that you wouldn't run after them? Amen? See, they wouldn't run after those teachers. He sent them out. He says, go, you false anointed ones. Go ahead. I'm going to wait, but you won't touch my bride. She's having a love affair with me. She loves me. She's that, that little second cousin. I can hear the old buckboard coming down the road. She's lived true, and the cousins left her to shame. She said, but he promised. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Up here on uh, Mount Camelback, I was up there praying last August, and the Holy Spirit spoke in my heart. And I was thinking about what would happen after, and he gave me a scripture for the church of God. I put it that way. 1 Corinthians 2, 6, uh, because 1 through 8. And then I, would, I said, well, that, uh, I know what that is, and uh, I thought about it. And that's uh, the scripture here, 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 8. I'll just read it, can read it to you. I spoke to him. Uh, to Sister Coleman about it. And brethren, when I come to you, came not with excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, and my speech and my, my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the prince of this world that, that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. And I got that, so I says, now, I wonder what that means. Well, I know that uh, if you would go, if you or would be sent anywhere, you would have to go in the power and demonstration of the spirit of the living God. And then I thought back here, I said, well, you're here in New York City, uh, God has healed the people, raised the dead, that your faith wouldn't stand in human wisdom here. That it would stand in the power of God to bring revelation and heal the sick and so forth. And then thinking if I would go anywhere, this is what he give me. And not knowing anymore until last night, and I really got to shouting last night, page 46, as Brother Man's reading here. And he said, my speech was not, uh, in my speech, and my speech and my beseeching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit, power of the power. There, see, there's the gospel, see. Jesus said, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Didn't say, go teach. He said, go preach. In other words, demonstrate the power. And these signs shall follow them. Just teaching doesn't do it. It takes the actual spirit itself demonstrating these signs. Listen to because of this, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Oh my, see, to change the man. Now, uh, how be it in weakness among you that are perfect. And then uh, the Lord showed me this, this, uh, what that meant there. Full grown, perfect. And I began to say, well now, what does that mean? Perfect. 
And then Brother Branham here on page 46, he said here, but we speak the wisdom of God in mystery. See, the threefold mystery of God. Then I begin to shout. Then I realized that the wisdom that had been spoken here for 10 years and all of it was always pointing to Christ to have the preeminence, which is the threefold mystery of God, has already been spoken here. And then he's telling me here in the sixth verse, when this goes out, it goes to those that are mature, ready to receive it. Now go back to, because oh, about two weeks ago when I, was, when I was preaching unity of the faith, to those of us that are mature have, have come to this spot, hold it right there. Amen? Amen? Hold it right there. To those that, of us that are mature, and then to the mature ones, you can bring this revelation as to what God was doing under the seventh seal. Amen? Amen. And then when this revelation strikes as to what he has been doing under the seventh seal, then you'll find out that it's been wisdom all the time that's been here, bringing you the threefold mystery of God. See, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God and demonstrating the power of God, not given all the exercise of his power, but adding to the promises as you chop it out by faith. Amen, see? Now, and we speak this wisdom among them that are perfect. Oh, I hope you can get what I'm trying to say. In other words, the wisdom was spoken out of season. Maybe I can explain it that way. In other words, it hasn't even gone nowhere yet. Maybe that's better. But it was spoken here, this wisdom, out of season, out of season as to what God was doing by this word under the seventh seal. And this is what is to come back upon the bride as he returns back and shows the bride the loose things, how this one because went off here and this one because went off there. But all the time, what was it? The word coming in. Amen. And the bride being green and, 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 and a ripe green, full of life of this world, blind, wretched, miserable, poor, and naked, and didn't know it, because full of, a, uh, of ability and also know-how education. And then for about 10 years in New York, the word coming in by revelation and stripping you. Absolutely making us weak. Absolutely making us weak. And then the word came into seven virtues, faith through brotherly kindness, and seven is God's number. Then if seven is God's number, we have become perfectly weak. Amen? Then if we are perfectly weak through seven virtues, we can't do nothing because it's human. It's human. You get it now? That's why it's human. We can't do nothing. Because we're still human and we got faith and virtue and patience and temperance, but we are still human. And we can't do it, but in New York, he stripped us through these seven virtues. He brought in the word, and he wouldn't let us move in this church here anyway, but according to the word. <laughs> I hope you got it. It took the starch out of us. It took the skin off our hides, but he made us perfectly weak couldn't nobody get up and raise up and uh, with their own might and power and what the color who they are and whatnot that was stripped out of here amen, amen. therefore we all are weak laying around here amen we can't do nothing the closer we have gotten to him the weaker we have become because the more comes forth that you want you can't do it so now being speaking this wisdom this morning of the threefold revelation God's one purpose, amen, was to, to get his people, uh, get his word into his people, the hope of glory. That was his purpose, to have the preeminence in his people. And here it is this morning. Praise God to full-grown seeds that have ripened and are finally ready. My God, for the wisdom of God to come in and in God coming, I hope you get what I'm trying to say. God 
purposely stripping us down by the word. Many are waiting for thus and so. Nothing is being done. Just saying, playing the tape and whatnot, but no revelation on what he said. When you hear those tapes from out there, then you understand what I'm talking about. And everything I'd say was something new. I thought I could understand it. Everything I'd speak is all new. Intelligence was a thing that told everybody. It's on the tapes. I said, well, that, that is the Holy Ghost. Then when I begin to preach like uh, uh, New York's a rough place, you better have the word. They didn't like it. So I didn't know what I said. Here at ease in Zion. So I saw that the people are blanketed down with the intellectual conception of the message. That they believe the message and that's it. That's down in the West Indies, South America, it's in Europe, New Zealand, Africa, all over the world in this country. Every one of them believe all they have to do is to get baptized, Acts 2.38, and that's it. And they're in the message and here we are. You ask them down the aisles and so forth. And ask them their condition right now also when you ask them that. And you find out what's been here. It's been God. And I say, I'm not going to say it no more now. It's been God coming in here with the word to purposely make us perfectly weak through the seven virtues. To bring on the perfect strength, the charity, which is the strength of every one of those virtues. That's what he's been doing. He has done it in New York City. By the word of the Lord. Amen. I hope you got it. Praise God. That was my thought this morning. Amen. So therefore, it's a revelation to the elected ones. That their father right now is revealing he loves them. By the mere fact you're sitting in here. He collected us here together. And beat down our intellect. By bringing forth a revelation and vindicating it. Amen. Beat it down, brother. That's right. See? No wonder the devil is howling against it, see? We was told right there that we all all right, and the brother said, unless you get out of the word, we have the blood. We all right. We're waiting for the resurrection. And the devil don't bother you. I said, my. See? Now, that's his way of doing it. The bride living the word and expressing Christ by letting him have the preeminences in her. And then a uh, uh, Wednesday night, as we were speaking here about the lame man and having a purpose in his heart, one day I'm going to be made whole for 38 years straggling around there. And finally, Jesus Christ saying, rise up, take up your bed and walk. And not even really knowing who Christ was under the seventh seal, what it was all about. Amen. You getting it now? Yeah. And then Jesus Christ finding them in the temple, assembled together there. And coming back and saying, Behold, thou art made whole. Praise God. And then says, Sin no more. Don't miss the mark with your thoughts and ideas and so forth. It's only the word. It's not a church government. It's the word. Amen. Praise God. So relax and hit the bullseye every time. Amen. See, now, after he's already been, already been completed, which it has now for eight years, he returns back and shows the bride what he's done. He reveals it. Is that what this voice is all about? Is it ready to come back here and pick up these loose ends here and show it out? Now we are nothing. We can't do it because it's not by our power nor our might, see, but by his spirit. Now, the word itself has made us weak. As I said, seven complete virtues, human. And the closer you get to God, the weaker you are. Now, now we have perfect weakness. Seven virtues. Now God's strength, number eight, divine love can be made perfect. It's complete, finished, human weakness. Now charity is ready to do it. Now we can be kind to one another. This is human, and you know that. But now, can we love the unlovable? Can we love the worst white racists or the worst black extremists? Can we love the filthiest sodomite, the dirtiest prostitute through our Human virtues this morning, can we do that? Come forward if you can. You know you can't. But charity will never fail. Malachi 4 had charity. And that's the word. And he poured it into a bride. Do you know what he poured into his bride? Upon our faith, he poured a blood atonement into us. And this blood atonement brings down his presence. 
around the blood. He sees the blood. The blood is here. Let's say right here in New York City. The blood atonement is here. Listen. Oh, praise God. Here it comes fresh. Amen. Amen. The blood atonement is here through revelation. Amen. It's the word. Amen. Then if there's a people that's special to God for a purpose, and it has received a blood atonement, though they don't even understand it, but one morning, wisdom will come to them and explain it to them, and then the blood atonement is there, then he can descend, the pillar of fire can come down in our midst because the blood atonement is already there by revelation. He can't go there because they think it's one minister, many virgins. Can't go over here because it's abstinence. Do you get it? Can't go up here in New England because, because no more pastors. Oh, get it! But here, the word, the sword, the blood atonement. Now you know what it's been for 10 years. God has put a blood atonement here in New York City. The word of God. And they say it's, uh, I'll just say it now, I'm not going to say it no more. They say it's the white horse rider. They say it's the tent and all these things. And you all know that. And, it, and all in the islands and all them places there. I, just, I was sick to find, out, uh, to find out you should get to see because these letters that are written here. Poor sister, sister, uh, sister down here in, in, in Trinidad writing. She's pregnant and she don't know what to do. Should she fast and pray because she wants the Holy Ghost and don't know what to do. And those kind of letters make you sick. You don't know what to do with those kind of letters. And all around the world, they're doing all kind of crazy, inane things. And all the time, it's the word. If some minister would only preach the word to them, then otherwise, then if they, here's what the devil has done, he's come and brought the tapes and the books and tell them everybody's all right. Just believe the message. And you got the Holy Ghost. Then those poor people without the Holy Ghost go out and the devil slays them. But if they only knew it, they had a promise. They say, back up, Satan. I got a promise. Amen. God promise, Satan. Amen. And I'm going to receive the Holy Ghost. Now, why don't the minister tell them that? They're afraid to. Because if you tell them that, then they're going to split up the church. Those, these big intellectual dignitaries are sitting there. They ain't looking for the Holy Ghost. They're sitting there in the message. Now, you know I'm telling you the truth. I ain't going to say this no more. I'm telling you this morning. So you'll know what has happened in the message. But God, that come fresh to me, brother, charity never faileth. Human virtues, all seven, will fail without charity. If someone has the Holy Ghost, they have added, 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 added. Now, catch what I mean. If there's been a, now, there are Holy Ghost people around, but if they didn't have the revelation under the seven seal, actually what it is like in a church, but if they, you can find a place where that has the revelation and has people there with the Holy Ghost, then they have added the uh, God-given virtues. Amen? <laughs> you got it? Then what they have done, they have actually brought in his life, his blood, his spirit through the sword, the word. Because it's been preached to them. Then divine love is the outer garment which is to come to unite all and bind it all as one. This is true perfection, giving you seven living virtues. The secret brings the bride to the end of herself. The word shows her how to get herself out of the way by washing her from dead forms, ideas, ability, works of the flesh, commandments of men, church, government, the whole thing. Do you realize that God has given us this great secret? Malachi force that he had a secret how to get out of the way. He got himself out of the way. Then here, by revelation, the sword cut every one of ourselves the ribbons. King Agag. I preached it out there and shh. But I preached it here, it was a shh, a little softer. <laughs> Amen? But out there, like that, see? But here, one here and one over there, see? Do you understand what I'm saying? You have received the revelation how to get yourself out of the way by the word slaying you. The word, I see slain bodies laying all over here. But then if you're slain, amen, he can quicken you and raise you up by the Holy Ghost. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Dead in Christ. World gone. 
Amen. And slain out before the Lord. Can these slain bodies live? Prophesy. Amen. Praise God. I can feel the spirit coming from the four winds to come up on these bones sitting up here with sinew on them. But God gave you a revelation how to put on sinew, how to put on flesh through the word. The word. The word has done it. Amen. So therefore, God has given us the, the, the secret. Amen. How to get out of the way. And it's the word under the seventh seal. And many are waiting for all these things that they're waiting for and they're sitting in flesh. And you don't dare preach on no flesh. Not in this message. You better have the seventh seal on the spot with you outside of here. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, uh, God is wanting to descend this morning because he sees the blood nature which has, been, which has brought us into his presence. Now, 1 Corinthians 13. I'm finishing up here now, Sister Nadine. I, uh, Paul said that with all the mysteries and all I could do it myself, I'm nothing without charity. Therefore, the blood, word, sword, sacrifice has been added to our faith, the seed, and brings us into God's presence. And this is that great mystery upon that seventh seal. And charity controls seven virtues and gives strength to it. Perfection, partial knowledge, three graces, and the, the loose ends are gathered up in the six seals and superseded by the seventh seal. And revealed and given out as a message to be poured into the bride as the word of God, knowledge of the Son of God. Bringing a completeness of communication is Christ himself, love. No more tongues, no more gifts, and no more knowing in part. Amen. If we know in part, Baptist, Methodist, and so forth, Pentecostal, that's in part. Amen. But he which is perfect is come. A perfect knowledge of the perfect word is here with a revelation in perfection. Adding to our faith. Amen. Amen. Then Christ in the fullness in Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost. They had spoken in tongues for themselves. Amen. But when it comes to preaching and laying down the word, the, the, there was no tongues then. Christ was there in the fullness in Peter communicating to his people through one language, Galilean. Amen. Now the Mexican girl here in Brother Brand's meeting here, she spoke Spanish, no English. And while Brother Branham quoted from the vision, she understood everything he said. For Christ was there communicating. He which is perfect was there from the vision. So tongues and knowledge in part shall be superseded by the more complete perfect knowledge by means, by means of divine love communication. Praise God. Divine love. There'll be no mimics to that. There'll be no impersonation to the third pull going forth in the bride. It'll be Christ in the bride. Do you love him? Amen. Do you understand, friends? Why? Well, trust and pray to God you do. Understand what was preached to you this morning. Maybe you didn't get it all. That's all right. But let me say this to you. That uh, the mystery of what God was trying to do, he was just to break it down to you simply, he was trying to get the preeminence in his people. Now the devil hates this revelation. <laughs> you see, man, I knew that for for even coming here, see, all week long, see. But therefore, if I could say it to you this way, God has given us here a revelation here, Jacob grace, Joseph perfection, and I don't even want to say it no more because I feel that we have reached the time and went out here to Tucson and preaching on the absolute on the Sunday morning, January the 20th, Brother Perry Green's father, he's a dreamer, and he's the one that, because dreamt, because of our brother Branham going back to Jack Moore's church in Shreveport in 65, he came out and told me, he said, Brother Coleman, that shuck was completely dry. And he says, two-thirds walked out. And I said, my. Then there was a sign to me that the seed, if the shuck is dry, then the last life has left the shuck. And it's in the seed. Then if the last life has left the shuck and is in the seed, then the last bit of greenness has left the seed and has turned golden brown. I hope you got that. That was the dream that was spoken to me after the hard message I had to preach. And the other was Brother Fred Barker. Brother Bram told him, because he's paralyzed down the side. And he's the song leader. 
And Brother Bram told him in 65, I don't have a word of, of the Lord for you. He said, but one day you'll speak the right word and say the right thing, and you'll be healed. And that night I told the Tucson Tabernacle, I said, my God, you got a blessing of God sitting right here. You got a sign of the third pull. And I spoke about, because, because Sister Coleman's eye also, I said, right here, I says, the, the mighty intelligence, the dynamics of God is wanting to come down and give us the mind of Christ what to say the right thing and do the right thing. And if we have already received the revelation this morning, we've been doing the right thing by the word. Amen. Amen. I hope you get that now. The other words, this is doing. The other words, the secret is knowing what to do and what to say. So he moved the mind of Christ into the bride, the word, which tells us what to do and tells us what to say and how to walk and how to live and how to talk. Amen. Amen. And we've been doing it on the inspiration. For the last 10 years, just doing the right thing. Keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. Then one day, like Sister Hattie Wright, you'll say the right thing. That's nothing but the truth. And if you can speak that this morning, that this message is nothing but the truth, then the inspiration can move around. Oh, God, this morning is wanting to move upon his people. He's looking for people that believes the word in its simplicity, that won't tense up and, and try to figure it out. Just believe the word as it has been spoken, the wisdom of it being this mystery and a threefold purpose of God. Then the mighty dynamics can move in and drop in on his people and make us speak the right things. Praise our God. And then you'll see a perfect communication go forth. It'll be perfect. I believe it with all my heart. Amen. I believe that it'll come on the wings of a snow white dove. You believe that, friends? I want to read something to you as she picks up that key there, wings of a snow white dove. I want to let you go. I told you that Brother Brown preached this message, events made clear by, by prophecy. He said, friends, this is the f- fulfillment. That's uh, page 41. This is the fulfillment of Malachi 4, St. Luke 17, 30, St. John, Revelation 10, prophecies. Then he went on, he made them stand. He said, pledged by the, the Bram Tabernacle. Now with one accord, let's stand and say, I now accept Jesus Christ as Savior and, and also healer, and by his grace from this hour henceforth, O God, let no unbelief ever enter my heart For I have seen the prophecy of this day fulfilled. I believe that Jesus Christ is alive and here now, confirming his word of this hour, the prophecies that was written of him has now been fulfilled in our midst. He is my Savior, my God, King, my all in all, dear God, hear our testimony and give to us day by day the bread of life and we will offer the praise of God From the depth of our heart, we praise thee, the mighty one, the God of the prophets. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Then he made him sing, now I believe. I wonder, is that your testimony this morning? I wonder if you believe this revelation that has gone forth in New York City. I I wonder if you believe it's been from God. Because I myself feel it's all over with. I feel it's finished with. It's done. And it's been spoken and... I do not intend, I hope not, to have to come back to refer back to my person or anything like that there for that's, to me, it's over with. It's finished with. All I'm waiting for now is a sign on the wings of a snow white dove. That's all I'm waiting for now. And I know that a message like of this type is a rough one to bring because God's got to reveal it. And so therefore, though you try to tell the people don't strain, don't... Try to press, see if you could only be thanking God for what has been revealed this morning. I don't know, (laughs) praise God, but uh, nevertheless, God has spoken. And so, therefore, that is the message of God and what his purpose was. Wednesday night, the previous Wednesday, it was... God overpowering, whenever that Catholic church is mentioned, the Holy Spirit comes down and just overpowers every spirit out here. And not even being in my mind, that, that just whoosh, like this, you see. 
and then on the battlefield Sunday morning and then coming back on Wednesday, the whole, you were coming into it. You entered into it, see? So you got blessed. As, as you enter into it, you will get blessed. This morning, trying to teach you what it has been. And in doing this here, many always compare what they were doing in the, the self-judgment uh, comes in. And that's where it goes, whoosh, just like it's here. And you feel it drop, the bottom fall out then, see? But nevertheless, um, the hour has come. And I believe with all my heart, the shuck is just about dry. The seeds are mature, according to what he gave me on Mount Camelback. I know you don't understand it. It has to do with finally accepting the will of God. That's all it means. You mature, you're ready for the principles of the kingdom of God to flow through you. The principles. The word here in New York City has cleaned out every spirit. Moved it out of you. That's what it's been for. Moved it out of you. Wash it, cleanse it. That's finished with now. Now the mind of Christ coming in on the wings of a snow white dove can move into you now. I trust and pray God. We've had some phenomenal, out, uh, out, uh, you can't even uh, know what to call last year. You know that. So what could you call last year? Just the Holy Spirit coming down and, and raking right on through here. And going out here to Tucson and seeing the mind of Christ and seeing what God did. And coming here this morning not even knowing and then having that first tape. But now I see. And I told him in Tucson, I said, after eight years, what is your condition tonight? I said, but now I see. Do you see now? Then I realized what was happening and people don't even know. They don't even know. They never got to Job 42, 6. I hate myself. I hate myself. And that was the secret that God brought the word in to us to strip us of self. And that's the secret that William Branham had for all those years. So simple and so humble. I hope you got it. Self was stripped in New York through the revelation of the word. Self was killed. By the divine undertaker. Amen. Amen. That's what it's been. That's all it is, sister. That's all that is, brother. That's the, that's the great revelation this morning. God has come in through the word and stripped us. And now, Brother Brand said, what we need on perfect weakness is empty vessels. God give us empty vessels that have emptied out themselves. No ability, no mind, no reasoning, no imagination, no nothing. Just sitting, not trying to strain and push and feel what, I'm, what am I talking about this morning. You should go out of here the happiest people in the world this morning. You should go out of here under the power of God, realizing what God has revealed to you this morning. I tell you, but I know one thing. On the wings of a snow, white dove, God sends his pure Sweet love, a sign from above, on the wings of a dove. Shall we stand? No one on the floods many days. He searched for land in various ways. Troubles he had some, but not from above. God gave. On the wings of a dove, on the wings of a snow, wild dove, God sends his pure, sweet love. Sign from above on the wings of Adam. Jesus, I say.
think on him came to earth one day he was born in a stable on a manger of hay though he rejected but not from a On the wings of a dove. This was God's prophet. Though I have suffered in many a way, I by the Father above He gave me a son on the wings of a dove let's worship him on the wings of a snow God sends his pure sweet love a from above on the wings of a dove as our sister keeps playing just think Amen. God gave Noah a sign, gave Christ a sign, gave William Branham a sign. The message this morning, meaning that he's going to send us a sign on the wings of a dove. What's that sign, Brother Coleman? That's all over with. It's finished. All over with. Return back that second time. Say, Behold, thou art made whole. Just relaxing, praise God, moving into a feeling and knowing that it's finished with and realizing that present tense salvation under the seventh seal, the mystery hidden from the ages, the word, the secret made known, just the plain word. God knowing that the human great mighty intellect, Second Timothy 3, heady high minded, could impersonate those seven virtues. So he hid it. And just said it's the word. And knowing that those seven, those senses, those five senses could know that it's just the word. So they had to, to like come up with all kinds of strange ideas and doctrines. And then when that bride has held to the word, then God comes back around and drops the Holy Ghost up on those lambs that have added to their nature the blood sacrifice, the word of God. We are here and I, I know we are. Oh, praise God. On the wings of a snow. Let's take one of those hands. Duh. Duh. God sends his pure, sweet love. A sign from above. On the wings of a dove. That's it. On the wings of a snow white dove, God sends his pure, sweet love, a sign from above, on the wings of 
praise his name, every head bowed. On the wings of a snow white dove, the message has gone forth. I know it's the truth. The enemy's howling and scowling, but God's going to vindicate it on the sign on the wings of a dove. He's going to send it. I know that for the word of God has been preached here and he'll vindicate his word. But just had to bring this thought to you this morning, tying it into you, bring it out. My simple thought it was that them people typing out Christ in the Old Testament under them seven seals didn't know exactly what they were doing. They were being led by the Spirit of God. And that's all it was under the seventh seal. Being led by the Spirit word anointing and doing it and letting God come in and have the preeminence to clean us up through the washing of the water by the word. And now we stand here, different dreams and things happening and manifestations and realizing that the mechanics has gone forth and to perfectly prove it to you, Christ is revealing his own, uh, uh, Jesus Christ on our hands. He says you are not supposed to know the mechanics. Then he comes back around and says, you're only supposed to know the dynamics, the pulsating of it. So I understand what's going on this morning. But praise God, there's been a revelation to bring out these mechanics and to explain it to you. And the devil hates that. But it's, it has, it's finished. To me, it's over with. And I'm looking for Jesus Christ, the dove, to come and prove it on the spot. To smash the individuals in the forehead. It'll, it'll never be a group. It'll be it's an individual love affair with Jesus Christ. So th don't look for a group. But there was a place in New York City, by the grace of God, that this revelation was preached in. And so I trust and pray. It's been wonderful. The past years, it's been wonderful knowing that God has put a to me, some of the cream of the crop together, that we could come in here and fellowship like this here and take this word of God. And let me exhort you here this morning, if you love God and you are predestinated unto the adoption, you're going to receive the Holy Ghost. You're going to know what it's all about. Only want you to believe it and to relax. You come back Wednesday, come back relaxed. God's going to fulfill every bit of his word. Is already moving. And I'm just looking for it to come anytime. When the prophet of God spoke this message here, he says the second pull was finished. The third pull was at hand. And so I'm trying to, by faith, step forward. And I feel that this portion is finished. And I feel that what we're looking for is at hand, the manifestation of Christ in the bride. So here we are. Praise the Lord. So the Lord bless you and the Lord be with you. It's long, but uh, I felt it's up on my heart to get it off. And so, therefore, it's the children's bread. And let us come back now, uh, Wednesday night. And but now I see. And I'm looking for the five guy to fall. And say, oh, that's what he meant. Praise the Lord. Brother Kurt, may the Lord bless you.